this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to visually check and quality control your laser scan registration. So we've got some good numbers here as far as our scan manager. Uh, in this case we used a cloud to cloud registration. Uh, the method of the registration isn't uh, what we're really concerned with here. It's more just about using the correspondence view and your scan point clouds in scene to also visually validate that your scans have been properly registered. So what we would want to do here is right click on our scans folder, the one that contains all the different scans, and go to view and correspondence view. And once we are in a correspondence view, uh, if there are scans that do not have scan point clouds as we do here, then let's actually just go through this. I'll right click scans folder view correspondence view if you have scans that are in this folder that are not that do not have a scan point cloud created it'll ask you do you want to load these scans and if so how many million points per scan do you want to load so if I put one here that would be one million points per scan I actually do not want to use any of the loaded data because I will not be able to use our clipping box with the loaded data so I'm gonna hit no here and for those that are not familiar with the scan point clouds or how to create them, essentially when you see this little number three here next to your cloud, that lets you know that you have a visually optimized scan point cloud, which allows us to use a clipping box in a 3D view. If you need to create those, uh, you can do it per scan, or you could do it for the entire group by right clicking on the folder and going to operations, point cloud tools, and then create scan point clouds. Alternatively, for the whole folder, if you want to do them all at once, you can also go to pre-processing, pre-process scans, and there is a button in there, radio button called create scan point clouds. So uh, you can pause the video here if you haven't quite caught up with that. If you have, you might be looking at something like what we're looking at here. What I want to do is actually set the center of rotation by using this set rotation button here up top, click somewhere in the middle of my area here. And I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel to kind of get myself a little bit closer. And you notice in this case, I have already created a clipping box. Um, if you have not done so, go ahead and do that now. In fact, since we're here, let's just run through it. I'll delete my existing clipping box. And this is typically what you might be looking at where you're you're not really able to see through the roof or whatever the top of your data looks like. Uh, so in order to create a clipping box, use the button up here up top. And the first thing that we probably want to do is go over to our uh, clipping box toolbar here and change to the rotation manipulators. And we want to grab our blue handle and just roughly align the clipping box with the data. So once that's done we can go back to our scale manipulators and I can use the arrows here to sort of drag an area of interest. Once I've done that I can sort of do a left click and rotate around click back on that box until I start to take down the roof and the first thing I want to actually do here as well is grab the blue handles on the bottom of the box and I want to come up until I'm, I'm basically what I'm going to do here is we need to check the data in a couple different directions we need to check it from the top down so we're looking essentially at the X and Y rotation and orientation of the data but then we also need to cut sections on the floor so that we're checking the Z of the data, the elevation of the data. So if I grab this box and I basically bring those two pieces together and create a nice clean thin cross-section through the data as I scroll down to something like one of my I-beams here I should see exactly this where you have the different colors from the different scans still very accurately placed and registered uh, so that there's nothing that's twisted or offset at all.
So that's that's essentially what you would want your beams to look like. And you would go through and check multiple beams, multiple walls throughout the project. You wouldn't just check one specific area, but we are just for now gonna show you just one area. Um, but in general, you would wanna do, you'd wanna use this process throughout your entire project and look at several of your beams all over the place to get an idea of what was happening. The next thing we can do, as we mentioned, so we've sort of verified in one area, the X and Y, but what we wanna do is verify also the Z. So if we create a very thin section on the floor, again, it's probably gonna be helpful for me to set my rotation point. So I come back up to set rotation point. I'll click on a point on the floor. And now as I use my mouse wheel to scroll in, you can still see even from the very side where orange, blue, red, all these different colors of points are stacked up right on top of each other. None of them are offset. We don't see any floors above or below. So that's a real important QAQC process for your scan data. Um, definitely something that you should be in the habit of doing before you start to do any type of analysis on steel, concrete, uh, anything structural where you're doing an inspection type activity, uh, this is a real good best practice to go through. So if you need to go back and maybe tighten up your registration, whether that's adding additional targets, removing erroneous targets, or potentially doing a cloud to cloud in a small area to tighten things up, uh, those are all methods you can use. But this is how you identify and understand the quality and accuracy of your registration before you proceed with any of those processes.